Hi, I'm Julian, and I'm so happy to be here today to run you through a cue I composed using only the new Berlin Orchestra. I composed a theme intended for cinematic animation kind of from the early 2000s, late 90s animations that I grew up with. So I guess I got inspired by a little bit of John Powell-esque um, compositions. Of course, I certainly am no John Powell, but I gave it a good shot with this one. And I'm going to play the track for you now, and then we'll see what's going on under the hood. Okay, so that's the cue I composed. Um, before I got started on any of the musical uh, structures or really an idea of what the track was about, I created a template for the track. So I just loaded 80 or 100 instances of the sign player and mapped across the articulations that I thought I was going to use, or at least was curious to use. So one of the first elements I gravitated towards was the marimba phone, because I knew I needed something playful for this animation style composition. And the marimba phone sounds fantastic. I really think it's one of the uh, secret weapons of this library. So I'm going to play the chords for you now, and then we'll see how that translated into the string um, arrangement later. <laughs> just a phenomenal patch. You can create some really organic sounding structures like it's just a joy to use and it's so responsive. Um, so like I said, that's how I came up with the original structure, but I didn't actually end up using the marimba phone in the finished composition. Rather, I took that MIDI and I translated it across to the strings and I just pulled up two um, ensemble patches on which I laid those chords with the intention of later orchestrating it properly. Those two ensemble patches together sound like this. So that's already sounding really nice and really full. Um, then I mapped them across uh, first violin, second violins, and violas, each playing respectively lower registers. Um, and those together with the original full ensemble patches just give this nice thick tone. It's already much fuller and I still think it's not too much for this type of um, composition because it really lives in this grand space and has a sort of adventurous feel to it. And because there's different articulations being triggered, you're effectively doubling the string player size, um, which normally would be maybe from a traditionalist perspective, a bad thing to do, but it really works for this track in my opinion. So the next thing that I did was get some bass rhythms going and I have a few couple things playing in the viola and the celli that um, have a counterpoint to them and have the syncopated thing going on that I think um, works really well to establish the actual rhythm. Together with the double basses as well, it sounds like this. So 
So that's already sounding much thicker and much more powerful. And together with those ensemble patches, I still think it's not too much uh, to live in this kind of composition because it really adds that kind of color. So the only thing left to do for me was to add a couple of runs um, and spiccato patterns here for the violins again. <laughs> So you can tell it's already sounding a lot thicker and just with a couple of runs in the violins I was able to finish the string section and move on to the next part which was the percussion. We have um, really not that much going on but it's all revolving around the snare and this kind of militaristic theme that I've established here. So if I just solo the snare for you... you get a sense of the Teldec studio space right away. And together with some of the low percussive elements, um, like the timpani rolls and the bass drum, as well as uh, toms, we get these rolls and these fills at the um, start of each measure, which I think works really nicely to get the energy moving. <laughs> And the xylophone plus the entire percussive section together sounds like this. So again, there's nothing crazy going on, but really it provides such a backbone uh, together with the strings to form uh, really the base of the track. So together with the strings and the percussion, Especially those timpani rolls really work their way in and um, drive the track forward. After the strings and the percussion, I moved on to the brass because I knew I needed to establish the main theme. So just the brass group together. So there's some playful elements in here, like the trumpet is kind of moving away a little bit from the melodic pattern that we established with the strings. So together with the sustained notes, we get the following. And then for the main theme, I mean, normally I wouldn't uh, gravitate towards using key switches, but I've really changed my mind since I've been starting using orchestral tools because of the lack of need to post-process these samples with reverb. Um, you can really be confident in your approach uh, to using key switches. Um, and maybe it's a personal thing. I just used to never use key switches because I'd rather have complete control over the articulations or rather the space in which those articulations live since you need uh, different reverb for short samples than you need for long ones, especially for brass. But for this, um, I was super excited to see that 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 just wasn't the case. So you basically have the key switches up here, which um, signify that there's a change from legato to marcato. And in the brass, that's especially important because even though it would sound great, just the legato patches and just connected MIDI notes, the programming really works well uh, when you have marcato in as well because it has a natural uh, decay of the note. So some really powerful brass there and it might sound a little harsh at times but together with the rest of the piece it just glues together so nicely. So together um, with the strings, percussion but without the woodwinds uh, we get the following theme. <laughs> So that's already sounding great and really for the woodwinds um, to support the structure that we've created up until now um, I basically just let the woodwinds mimic the brass lines and um, reinforce that rhythmical pattern. So of course there's a little bit more playfulness uh, to the flutes and we have some trills going on as well 
Um, but I'm just going to play the woodwind group for you by itself. It's just sounding lovely. And I think these sort of playful movements in the flutes really, um, it, it's hard, difficult to hear sometimes in the grand scheme of things, but I think you can feel it. And it's really something that in this animation style of composing is important to do, that you break a little bit from the convention patterns and um, just follow your heart a little bit and, and see what you come up with. Something I wanted to highlight is the bassoon, which just sounds phenomenal in my opinion. You know, I was never one to particularly pay uh, much love to the bassoon, but I think there you can really hear the every single breath, and I think every single note that's been sampled is just meticulous. So thank you so much for watching and listening to the new Berlin Orchestra. I hope that you liked the piece as much as I did, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.